Hello, my name is Rick Bradbury. Welcome back to video number 17 in the Canon EOS 500D T1i and Kiss X3 series. And what I'm going to start doing over the next few videos is covering the software which came with your Canon camera and um, how you would use it, how to you know to manage your images or make changes or edit them. Uh, when I say edit them, it's only very very light editing that you can do, and you're not going to be able to com create composite images with it. And for that, you would need software like Photoshop or maybe GIMP or some other package. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using Digital Photo Professional version 3.8, uh, which is, I believe is the latest version. Uh, so hopefully, you know your version is the same. If not, then you can check Canon's website uh, for the latest version. Okay, uh, I will just say one thing. Please excuse the voice at the moment. I'm full of a cold or flu, uh, so I shall try not to cough and sneeze down the microphone. Okay, first of all, this is the main screen that you will see. Now, you should get a folder view. I mean, I'm running Windows at the moment, so this may be different if you're on the Macintosh. Uh, but you get a basic folder structure or directory structure, which is similar to Windows Explorer. Okay, and this shows you the folders where your images will be. Um, so you may well have to navigate to where you keep yours. I've got a purpose folder with some images in, both RAW and JPEG, in this folder on my desktop here. Um, just for these series of videos. If this isn't actually showing, then you can click the folder view and then that should bring it up. Okay, um, what I will do now is just before we go into looking at viewing images and different ways you can view it, is just have a look at some of the preferences. So on the tools and preferences menu there, which is control K uh, for the shortcut, Okay, I'm just going to let you see the preferences and settings that I have on here. I believe I've left them in default, although I may have changed one or two. Um, I mean, you can look at these tabs as I go through them and compare them to your own. I'm going to cover these in more detail as we go along because they'll take a fair bit of time to actually cover. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it all in uh, this one 10 minute video. So that's the color management one. If we go tool palette, there are the options that I've got set there. Okay, you can pause these if you need more time to look through them. View settings and general settings as well. So they're the options that are set on this. I believe a lot of them are default, although I may have changed one or two. Um, I've had this installed for a little while, so I may well have changed one and uh, I've forgotten. So we'll close that. Okay, what I want to show you first is how you would view your fi your files now. In terms of getting your files onto your computer, you're going to have to take the memory card and then manually copy manually, unless you have another application that will do it for you. Copy them to a folder, and then select the folder in this list here. Uh, there is no import dialog program or dialog box with this, like there is with Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, so I've had to do it manually. So we'll click on this folder, which again is just sitting on my desktop. It's not where I normally store my images. Um, and that's what you will see. Now this view that I have set is set to show me a preview of the image which is a JPEG preview, the histogram and the image um, settings or information. You can actually change this view so if this is a little bit too complex for you or say if you've got a lot of images which you need to actually scroll through you know say you've got a couple of hundred images then uh, you may well want to change it. Now the way that we can do this is go view and we can change it from the thumbnail with information option here or we can use the control plus four, three, two and one options. We can go small JPEG, um, small thumbnail sorry, which will show you a big list of small thumbnails easier to look through. Again that designation R or RAW when it says it tells you it's a RAW file so anything with that designation there is a RAW file, the others are JPEG. And as we change through these, or we can use the keyboard shortcuts, we have different sizes and options. Now, certain views will give you more information about the actual exposure um, than others will. So if we just go back to view 4, which is thumbnail with description, okay, what we can see here is I've got a preview of the actual image there. It tells me it's a raw file. That's the same image but a JPEG. I shot RAW plus JPEG for the purpose of these videos. Okay. Now if we look at the RAW file, we get a histogram. We also get the histogram shown there. Uh, this is actually bunched over to the left here because of the dark parts of the image there, but we'll cover histograms in a later stage. 
the file name there you will see will be the same as the JPEG. The difference being is this is a CR2 or Canon's RAW file extension and that one there is a JPEG. It tells us what camera we used to take the picture, um, the shooting date and time, the exposure settings, that's the shutter speed that was used, 1 one one twenty fifth of a second, the aperture, f5.6 or the f-stop, no exposure compensation was used and the ISO 400. Um, brightness to the raw, raw file settings is something you can do when you actually bring bring files in to Canon Digital Photo Professional and have it automatically apply certain settings and the white balance as shot. Okay, So this is the information that I prefer if I do ever use this program. Uh, these images that I'm going to be using you can see I've got a leaf here, a rock with some moss, a turtle or tortoise and some frogs and a little vase ornament thing there. So these are just some images I've purposely shot some of these with you know, really blown out bright backgrounds and some dark parts so it gives us flexibility on showing what we can do um, in this software later on in the video series. Okay, now we'll actually double click images which will actually open up a image, should do a slightly bigger view of it and it displays it over it there. Now you can actually bring up some more information. Now you can right click on it on the actual image there and bring up the information pane and this will give this will give us more information on the actual shot okay it tells me the photographer that's the name my contact number and it's copyright by me that's the information that I showed you how to put into your camera using the EOS utility in the previous couple of videos and here we can see what lens that I used as well the focal length and a few other bits of information Okay, oh, that's the camera body number for my camera. So we'll close that. So this is just a quick introduction to the layout and how you would bring up some information. We will go into these in more detail. Um, I'm aware of the 10 minute time limit per video, so it's going to take a few videos to cover these. But this is basically how you would view your folder structure and bring files in and change the view setting, <coughs> the view settings, you know, to your preferences and we will go through some of the more advanced features um, over the next few videos. If you do have any questions about using this software then by all means throw them in the comments, chuck me an email via the website or via YouTube and I'll get back to you as soon as I can do. If the questions are going to be answered within the later videos that I'm going to do in the series I may well um, leave it till then so just bear that in mind. Okay, this has just been a quick introduction to the software which is good software, you know, I use Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop like I say not because this is bad software, that's just my preference. Um, you know, this came with the camera so it's free. So to get you started, um, it will certainly help you manage and um, tweak your images, um, you know, very successfully. So thank you very much for watching this one and I'll be back with the next video in the series on the software which came with the Canon ES 500D T1i and KISS X3 very soon, hopefully, um, without this cold and flu. Hi, and just for this quick tip on Canon Digital Photo Professional, I just want to show you um, a feature which is quite handy um, called Bookmark. So if we click up here and look at Bookmark, I've actually added one already. And what you will do is when you click Add, it will add whichever is highlighted here as a bookmark. So similar to your web browsers, you know, Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, whatever you use, um, you can actually add quick bookmarks to folders where you've worked with images that you've worked with um, in the past. So say if you're using a load of folders with subdirectories, you can get back to a certain directory very quickly by adding a bookmark or a favorite maybe if you will um, within the software. So that's just a quick tip and I will see you in the next video on the Canon EOS 500D T1i and KISS X3 um, software series. Thank you very much.